Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on post-production here on YouTube. Today we're talking about the best settings to render out of Blender and bring into Fusion. And we're gonna get right into it. Here's my scene in Blender and a couple things that need to be set for sure. Obviously you need to have a high quality model. You need to make sure your lighting's right and all of that stuff, which is outside of the scope of this tutorial. But once you have all of that, just looking just great. Come over here to the inspector and the second tab down, the little camera is render properties. Under render engine, if you want something to look the very best it can, we pick cycles. And what you're gonna wanna look at is the render settings right here. And right here where it says samples, I feel like this defaults to like a thousand or 4,000. And a lot of the time you don't really need that many samples, especially in Blender 3 in the newest version of cycles. So I usually like to start it out at like 128 or so. Depending on what you're rendering, you might even be able to get away with like 12 or like 24. I've rendered stuff like that before, and it honestly looks great as long as you have the denoiser on. So just click denoise, samples. I would start at something small like 128 and see how it looks and see if there's any problems. The other thing you'll probably wanna check is light paths. Light paths is basically the quality of the bounced light and everything inside of cycles. And generally this is set really high, and the higher these numbers are, the longer your render will take. And most of the time you don't need anything over just a few. I have this transmission set up really high. I probably don't need that either. I can probably set this to like two or three. And again, I would try all of these numbers at like three-ish, unless you just know you don't have anything transparent or anything like that, you can kind of turn those down and those will help with your render times and you won't really notice any difference in the render in my experience. The other thing is under film, I always check transparent because you pretty much always want some kind of alpha, especially if you're rendering multiple different layers, things like that. And that's really all we need to pay attention to here in this first tab. On the second tab that kind of looks like a printer, make sure you set your resolution. You can do 1920 by 1080. I had mine down at 60% just because I wanted a quicker render, but set that to whatever resolution you want. If you're doing an animation, make sure you set your frame rate to whatever your frame rate should be and your start and end. Here where it says output, this is pretty important. If you're gonna make an animation, make sure to set this folder to somewhere on your hard drive. If you're just doing a still, you can probably leave it as temp and then save it later. But this is the really big deal right here, file format. File format, in my opinion, should either be OpenEXR or OpenEXR multi-layer. If you want to output render passes and do all kinds of fancy things, which we'll get into in a later video, I would pick multi-layer, color, RGBA, and this right here, color depth, if you're gonna be compositing this, just set it to float half. If you have it on float full, it's going to be technically higher quality, but you're never really gonna notice it unless you're really pushing your image a lot. We still have 16-bit color channels, which is like plenty good quality for the color depth. And this will render faster and it will play back in Resolve better. I had this on full because I wanted all of the quality and it was just bomb in my system and I have a pretty good system. So definitely check float half, zip lossless is great and everything else is pretty good. This third little icon down, layer properties, this is where you'll set all your render passes and everything. Again, we'll get into this in a different video but here's where they are if you want to do multiple different render passes. All of that, all you have to do is just click these and they will be included in the multi-layer EXR. Really, really nice. And that's pretty much it. When you set your settings like that, you can go to the upper left-hand corner of Blender and say render image. And this will take a little while to render out the image. And if you have multiple passes or multiple render layers, those will all render out as well. And they'll all be combined into that one EXR file. And there's our finished image. Now I can just go up to image, save as, and save this wherever I want, obviously as untitled EXR, probably to the desktop because we're professionals. Back in Resolve, all we have to do is drag that EXR into our media pool. And we can drag it to the timeline if we want. If you have a multi-layer EXR, it'll probably show up just however it feels like, whatever channel it wants to show you. But we can right click and say, make new fusion composition. I'll hit create. I can open up the fusion composition and drag in my EXR and take the output of our EXR and put that into media out. And most of the time it will turn red, especially if you have a multi-layer EXR. But if you select that and then go up here to the inspector, right here under layer, you can select whatever layer you want. And we'll just go with composite combined. And that is our finished image. Now, 
what will happen when you render an EXR is it will come in really dark. The reason for that is because EXR is a linear color space and it's bringing it in linear here in Resolve. If you don't know what that means, basically it's remapping the colors in a way that's super high quality but doesn't really look nice. So here's what you do. Here in Fusion, before your media out, hit Shift Spacebar and we're gonna type in Cineon. That's C-I-N-E-O-N. -E and there is a tool called Cineon Log. We'll add that. And what this does is converts those linear colors into a color space that you might be used to working with. All you have to do is select it and go up here and instead of log to lin, let's go lin to log. And now this looks like a log image. Isn't that awesome? Here under log type, you can pick whatever you want. I like to pick BMD film because I'm used to working with Blackmagic cameras and kind of used to that color space. So there it is, your render in BMD film. Isn't that sick? And so then you can throw this in the timeline and go over to color and color correct it just like you would normally do for like something that was shot on a Blackmagic camera. Pretty awesome. So I know there are some things that I skipped over in this tutorial. This is supposed to be just a really quick guide to the best render settings that I've found. I am going to be making more Blender meets Resolve tutorials here in the future. So if you like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button. And I just hope that your blankets are soft and on a stool near you. Coming to a stool near you. Blankets. <laughs>